Hey everyone, Eric here. And today we're going to go slightly beyond SketchUp Desktop in order to look at both the inspiration and some of the tools and methods that I used to create this model here behind me, which you might recognize from our 2024 product release. <laughs> So this was actually a really fun internal project for me to get to be a part of. So I'm super excited to share a little bit of a sneak peek behind the scenes. Of course, we won't cover everything because the model, you know, has different parts and has different levels of detail and there's some extensions used. So we'll cover some different parts and different lessons. But right now, I just kind of want to take you through the thought process from where we started from just, hey, we need a model for 2024, come up with something to testing it to then checking to see how it fits within the different use cases, so the different views and, and in the model or the sort of the login window, and then ultimately to the final product that you see here on the screen. So let's just go ahead and get to it. I've got this model, but I want to sort of take a step back. We're going to kind of play with it. And we're going to kind of spin around and toggle some things on and off here in just a second. But what I want to do is kind of take a little bit of a step back. I want to go back in time to where this started. So we were tasked with uh, here in SketchUp, when the internal marketing and content team was tasked with creating an advertisement in a design awards flyer. So we knew that it had to speak to architecture, landscape, and interiors, and we knew that it had to be a portrait orientation. So we were going to emphasize this verticality. We also knew that we needed some room for text, and we needed um, a space for a logo. So that was kind of basically the design brief that we worked on. So, you know, just kind of scouring the internet like we do looked at some materialities, wood and green, looked at things that are hanging, vines climbing, vines hanging to sort of emphasize the verticality that you see in an A4 portrait or, um, or a, like a basically a letter. A4 is what you would see in the metric system, but would be equivalent to like a letter page that you'd see in a magazine spread. And then popping over to looking at sort of the lightness and the brightness and was this a tech campus? Could it be a school? Could it be a co-working? There's lots of different uses that we wanted to keep open-ended. And of course, thinking about this sort of iconic canopy piece, something that sort of stops your eye as your eye goes up, something inspired by, in this case, this is the British Museum, if anyone's been to the British Museum in London, and just has this big, gigantic glass canopy covering what feels like an outdoor street. So kind of blurring the line again between what is exterior and what is interior, what is landscape architecture, what is architecture. So this is kind of our starting point. I'm going to leave it here. I had to start with something and then pop over to SketchUp. An early model, sort of a first pass model that was built for the advertisement before we started planning for 2024 release, was looking almost like a stage set. It was like, what's the least amount we need to build in order to get the view that we want? And I was thinking originally that we would look at the corner because even though it's, a, um, because there's something dynamic about that two point perspective. And these columns in this case don't actually hold anything up. Now you might say they're unreasonably tall or they're structurally they're not sound and that's you're probably right um, i'm not a structural designer my background's in landscape and um, in visualization so in this case i got to kind of play architect and play interior designer and play structural um, engineer and it was a it was a lot of fun so in this case you could see here that the intent was to kind of focus on just the patterning sort of the rhythm of the mullions that you kind of see and which is based off of essentially just a couple of components so if I go into the facade group and I go into this group and you can see that not only is this panel itself a component, but you can see that this group of panels is also a component. So I basically just copied this little component, this little facade component, and then by mirroring it, so essentially using the flip tool, or if you want to go old school, you can go old school like this and uh, get some variety you can go you can can't really get variety going top down it's going to look the same but if you scale it this way um, then you get a different pattern so by creating by sort of mixing and matching these little individual pieces you can see if i select that one all of these larger pieces highlight so again trying to use components trying to be smart about it trying to create variety where um, so it looks interesting so if i wanted to take this same one here I could grab that, rotate it 90 degrees, and place this module just basically wherever I want. It's designed to sort of fit 
And then of course I would remove the mullions wherever that fits. So that's a component too. So if you make a change, everything's components, make a change to one, makes a change to all of them. You can see, of course, I don't really want to do that, but you get the idea. So this is my color by tag. Color by tag shows the organization. And I usually go to a working tag when I'm just kind of playing around. And then when I'm ready to start, start thinking about camera angles, I'll throw a watermark in there with a composition grid. And I'll just kind of sort of just tweak. What does it look like if we zoom in a little bit? What does it look like if we zoom out? Are we leaving room for a logo? Are we leaving room for some copy text at the top? And that's sort of the genesis of the concept. Now, this is all. This is where we left off for the ad. Where we um, finished here was something like this. So this is what went to print, and I think it just came out really nice. And it's a nice blend. It draws your eye both up and back down, and it sort of has some articulation on the ground floor. And it just kind of worked out really nice. So that's why that, so we said, well, let's expand on that idea. So back in SketchUp and flipping over to my finished model, what we have here was basically we needed more than just a corner. So we couldn't just do that corner anymore. We needed a lot. We needed to be able to see this thing basically from any angle. We needed to be able to spin around it. We needed to be able to zoom out, an aerial, section cuts, all this stuff, go to layout. So basically taking this building, making this entire building a component so that you can see here if I select something like this here, you can't see it because it's on the other side, it's mirrored, but basically you can see when I select a part of the building, the one on the opposite. So I'm really just making using a visual trick here to basically reduce the amount of work that I have to do by just copying the building and sliding it over. And the nice thing about this is when you're in the courtyard, it sort of frames your view. You don't really see this necessarily as just a, a repeat. Because when you're looking this way, you can see the opening on this side. But when you're looking not from inside the building, probably from here, you can see it's over here. So it looks just a little bit different based on which angle you're coming into the courtyard, which I think um, is cool. The canopy itself, I'm going to not go into a lot of detail about this because I want to do a special video just on how the canopy was built because it took a couple of tries to kind of get it right and um, playing around with some extensions. But the canopy exercise was quite fun because I knew that it wanted to cover the entire courtyard. So that was the size of it. I knew that it wanted some movement. So it felt more like a cloud rather than just a straight shot, which would feel very forced. And I knew that I wanted it You needed to be made up of some smaller pieces of glass that, again, goes back to that image at the British Museum that I was kind of inspired by. There would be some sort of structure that would hold the pieces of glass in order to get that sort of wave-like movement. Again, I'm not a structural engineer. I'm just kind of coming up with the concept and it's somebody else's job to help me figure out if it's buildable. And then um, from there, you know, again, looking at some different studies and looking at some different alternatives and playing with the undulation of the canopy because what that did is it really let me, um, in particular from this view, let me go to this view here. It almost looks at this point like this canopy is being lifted up like a blanket or a curtain or something like that. And it's revealing the people that are standing up here on that balcony. So there's just little kind of subtle things that were done that if you kind of pay attention and you look, you'll see those kinds of fun little things. So again, just to kind of wrap this part up, it was important that we looked at the courtyard from different angles. Here it is from sort of the side view, and again, with or without shadows on. Here it is from sort of, again, just off center. What would it look like to get up high and look back down? And then, of course, an image I think you've seen before, especially date when we were showing off the ambient occlusion, which is this interior shot here. So that was kind of really cool because, again, you can still see the courtyard in the background. So you, you're always... Your eye always knows where you are, no matter where you're looking at or which vantage point you're using as you move around the space. So lastly, I wanna kind of wrap up by showing, um, by showing you this cool thing that I started experimenting with here in SketchUp, which is where are these going from here? So here in the SketchUp team and the marketing team, we, they, these images go to 3D Warehouse, they go to blogs, welcome windows, they, do, they go to sliders, they go to all kinds of different things. So we wanted to kind of look at well, what would that look like to bring in the welcome window? 
So do we want to be the first thing you see when you sign in to SketchUp 2024? It could be an interior. Now, the nice thing is that this is not going to Photoshop. We're doing, we're bringing the mockups, the graphic design mocks into SketchUp. So if I wanted to tweak this angle a little bit, you know, I wanted to kind of look around and see, well, what would that look like if you changed the camera, the field of view? What would it look like if you turned the people on and off? You could kind of get that, um, you could kind of play around straight into SketchUp and you could still see the relationship of the model to the mock, which I thought was a really cool technique and I really enjoyed testing that out. Same thing with 3D Warehouse. So you can see that the mock-up behind, you can see it remembers the camera angle. So all it's doing is putting a watermark on top of this and then it's allowing me to sort of pick the view of the model that I think, I mean, that's kind of cool because there's this really long element here and when you're searching in 3D Warehouse, and then there's this person walking into the frame that almost that's looking down at the phone, but it's also almost looks like they're looking down at the search bar. And then there's people hanging out. I mean, this is a great image because some of these things I found from 3D Warehouse, I have to admit that you know, there's no reason for me to model a chair from scratch when it's something that's relatively easy to go and find one from 3D Warehouse. So again, looking at things like our blog, um, grabbing the screenshot, I know the blog changes and I know graphic design changes, so this won't always be the way that it is. But if I wanted to see what this particular view, which is the two point, which is this two point corner, and then I go back to the blog again, Again, all I have to do then is just grab my hand tool and then lift this up into place wherever I think it makes the most sense. And then what I would do is I would use this information to inform the marketing team. I would say, okay, um, of course, you don't have to do what I think works, but this if I need to move an umbrella or if I need to hide this one because of this lamp host right here, um, this is a really great shot, but I don't like the way that the lamp is inner Secting with the up in SketchUp, you just hide that and then come over here and say, okay, cool, that works a lot better. So that's a really great way for me to sort of quickly and easily iterate and sort of communicate with the marketing team by bringing in the watermarks of where the imagery is going to go um, after that. And of course, we go to layout and we go to other places, which is why a model that has the right amount of detail. Uh, is so important because it doesn't just live in SketchUp. As you know, you're going to see this in layout. You're going to see this in product demos. You're going to see this in animations. You're going to see this in webinars. So really thinking about a level of detail that works at different levels. So I'll zoom out and we'll just kind of see what we've got here. And there it is. It's even placed within context. I know this is not a real project. It's not a real project site. But even then, we can kind of get a sense that it is in an urban environment, like a walkable city or a downtown. So I'm going to stop there because unfortunately, well, not unfortunately, for better or for worse, I actually can keep going. There's a lot of little tricks and, again, the extensions that I used and mostly just trying things and see what works. I think design is one of those things where you can't predict the outcome always. And so you can kind of look at it and say, okay, does that feel right? Should I shift something? Does it need to go taller? And I think that's just the beauty and the joy of just working in SketchUp and being able to create, use the tools that we share with you in these videos. We actually use those tools. That's really important for me to basically reinforce the storytelling. Like we're, we're doing the same things that you guys are all doing out there. And we have, um, we have the same pleasure and we also have sometimes the same friction and we're always working to improve that and make it a better experience so speaking of better experience i hope you got something out of this video hope at least you enjoyed getting a peek behind the curtain of what we do here over at sketchup and with that i'm going to say thank you don't forget to give us that thumbs up if you like this video if you haven't already subscribe so you can get all the latest content when it comes out and i will say a thank you and see you next time